Evening, I'm Tom Hooper. It's 20 years, six minutes past six now. This weekend then, the Open Air Theatre in Scarborough playing host to another pop legend with four chart-topping albums, 13 top 10 UK singles, including three number ones. We are talking about, of course, Wet, Wet, Wet. Lead singer is Marty Pello. He's with us tonight. And uh, I believe, Marty, it's set to be your first visit uh, to Scarborough. With Wet, Wet, Wet? Yes, it is. So, well, I've been there before. Uh, I did a uh, I did a show there a few years ago. I was on a theatre on the on the seafront. Oh right, yeah, I that's. I think it's there now. Right. Still there? Uh, would that be the Futurist? Does that ring a bell? Yes. Right. I think that's what the very name. Mm. I, I did a wee kind of up close personal thing there. It was like kind of acoustic sort of thing. Right. That's all right. Yeah. The, well, okay. the the theatre definitely still there. I mean, how far back were we talking on that? Was was that some some time ago? Good oh, five, six years ago. There's a bit of a fight on at the moment to keep that theatre there, but it's it's closed down. But we're uh, uh, kind of uh, question mark as to whether it's going to continue to to be on that seafront there. Uh, what are they going to replace it with something else? Um, big question mark, really, whether it's going to be a, th- a theatre uh, in the future or whether they're going to turn it into something you know, a totally different type of attraction there on the seafront. So uh, mm. yeah, it's got quite a bit of history there. Indeed, it has. I admit, uh, if I would say, you know, it's been there. You know, lots of people have been through that door, so it'll be a shame to lose it. And so, this this venue that you're going to, though, the uh, the open air theatre, that's that's going to be a cracking one for you. It's the uh, the largest open air theatre in Europe, so uh, it's, it's it's a great location. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. You know, and the good thing about where we is that you know we'll have the songs to bring for you all to to sing along with and have a good day. You know, we've been doing some shows. This year, and we've done some shows in Europe, you know, uh, these outdoor festivals, and it's it's great to be able to bring out the songs and for people to have a good time. And that's it. I mean, that's all, that's all you're really home for. Is you know, it, that and a nice a bit of sunshine. Exactly. Is, is it, you know, for you, um, performing, is it a completely different feel when you're actually outdoors? Well, I think it's, a, you know, uh, once again, it's a space, you know, so you just engage in it. You know, if the punters are having a good time, you're mm-hmm. having a good time, and that's, that's all you're really aiming for. Ain rocket science what we do. <laughs> you know, it certainly isn't, you know, and I think that you just kind of bring out your bit, the, the songs that people are, are, f- are familiar with, because it's not really, those, the, the, the Scarborough show is not, not really about uh, educating, it's more about entertaining, yeah. you know, so it's, it's a no-brainer, you just say, all right, here's a, here's a song you'll be, I know you're familiar with, boom, 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 and, you know, we have the back catalogue of songs that, that you know, people are, uh, still uh, want to listen to, which is great, so we're really blessed from that point of view. And what about you yourself? Are you, are you uh, c- kind of uh, really, um, you know, enthusiastic when it comes around to these songs? Because obviously, I take it you've performed them quite a few times. You take uh, yeah. some enjoyment from that still? Aye, well, it's hard not really. uh, I think it's hard not to when people are, uh, other people are engaging in it. You know, I think your wants and your needs from your song, uh, good songs change as you, change as an artist, you know, and you, you, it's not about changing the wheel sometimes. It's about just giving the wheel new spokes, you know, when it comes to songs, you know. You, you just... Uh, yeah. You just you just rearrange them or make them fresh or or try them in different ways and the yeah. songs will take it because they have a good songs to start with. And and it's and it's incredible with with music how actually your music has pretty much influenced a lot of people through their lives. It's been a big part of their soundtrack to to them growing up through the years. Uh, well, that, that's the beauty of it. You know, when you have a career that has longevity, that you're, you're afforded that luxury. I mean, the most interesting, I think, for us is when we go on, uh, we go on the road. You know, we just finished an arena tour of the UK not too long ago, and uh, we saw different generations of our fans. You know, people who were kind of switched on to our music through their mums and dads' record collection. And that's, that's a great thing. And, and the, the youth culture and everybody who accesses the music in a different way, you've got YouTube, so you can go back and you can just see anything you've done for the last 20-odd 20, 20 years there. It's there up on YouTube. So they can really go on a journey with you and discover, you know, what you were like as, uh, as teenagers and uh, to where you're now as songwriters. It's I think so amazing. And you were speaking about, you know, mums and dads and their record collections. What, what about yourself? I believe that your your own uh, parents uh, that you used to listen to the music of Burt Bacharach and also Marvin Gaye back then. Has that yeah. influenced you all these years on? Yeah, I think it's a great it's a great uh, um, way for you to be switched on to music is through your parents' record collection. And then there comes a time and when you're in your uh, you know your, te- your formative years or teenage years where you discover your your music and you kind of rebel against what they <laughs> you know what they like because your music that you've discovered is pertinent to you and your youth culture. And then it comes full circle again for me, you know, that, uh, that uh, I still can embrace that chapter as well as, you know, the music that my, my mother and father listened to. And, I mean, and that's the, 
the beauty of great songwriters like Bob Bacharach, you know, and, and wonderful lyrics by Hal David, where you would be able to still go back and visit that now, uh, where you where you're at as an adult, and still get this uh, 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 an enriched. You're better for it. You're better mm-hmm. for it when you listen to those songwriters. And your teenage years, um, that was when you actually formed uh, the group, I believe. You, you, you formed the group with some of your uh, your schoolmates there. And was it um, Vortex Motion, the original name for the group? Woo! Yeah, look at that name there. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, you know, we needed a name. It's like, and then we came up with our name, wet, 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 and we wanted a name that people would have to ask twice. Yeah. <laughs> and it seemed to make sense at the time, you know. You go, ah, that's quite funny. And, and you think, you know what? Let's run with that. Because I was reading at the time, I mean, it's, it, you kind of started the band and around you with the music at the time, there was the likes of Duran Duran and Talk Talk, so you kind of went yeah. one better with Wet, Wet, uh, Wet. <laughs> we'd like to think so. We'd yeah. like to think so. You know, and, and, and for us it was, you know, it, it, it's one of those, we were always inspired by uh, bands that, that had names that, that always left you just a little bit kind of, you know, no perplexed, but you would think that's a cool name, you know, like the Red Hot Chili Peppers or Echo and the Bunny Men. Yeah. You know, things like that were just great plays with words, you know. Now- when I, when I was young, just like yourselves there, I, I was in a band, I was at school there, I was playing the drums in a, in a school band, uh, didn't really go any, <laughs> any great distance with uh, nah. that career, but did you ever feel back then that, yes, you know, there was going to be something really special going on in the years to come? Did you, did you think you'd be doing all these arena tours and the like? Aye, that's exactly right, because it was non-negotiable. It was non-negotiable. That was what, exactly what was going to happen, and we were arrogant, with the youth behind, you know, with youth and arrogance is a heady combo, and we'll be tied to anybody who told us any different. <laughs> and that's the way it was going to be, and that's the way it was, and we were blessed for that. You know, because I think when, uh, you know, when you believe in your dreams, but they're getting too sloppy, it's, it, it, it's so important that you carry them through, because real life soon comes a-knocking at the door, mm-hmm. and, uh, and it's about being able to see that journey through. And, you know, we uh, there's four guys who grew up together who believed in the same uh, vision and subscribed to that 100%. And, uh, you know, that, that meant hard work and when all the rest of our friends and their teenage years were going out and on a Friday night, you know, we were looking for the chorus for Sweet Little Mystery or writing songs like Angel Eyes, you know, because it, it was important to us. So there, there was dedication there and a belief. Well, and that's um- the difference. Rehearsing in, in parents' kitchens, I hear, as well. I would have rehearsed anywhere. <laughs> anywhere it would have had us. Yeah. You know, because we're so happy to be to be making the music, you know, and anybody who would, who would lend an ear to it and be enthusiastic about weed or about what we did, you know, was was it was inspiring to us. Was there, was there any point that kind of you remember where it went to the next level from, from those rehearsals that you had and, and mm-hmm. then it went to, you know, the next big step up? Well, you see that, you know, like I said, you know, the youth culture has uh, can access their, their music through the internet. You know, we didn't have that. We had this beautiful thing called Word of Mouth. And, you know, for us, we'd, uh, you know, just be starting to do gigs. And, uh, you know, it would be like maybe a couple of hundred people would come. And then it would be a thousand people. And, you know, and those sort of numbers when you've not got a record out in Glasgow was, you know, that was saying something. And that was... Because people, you know, would, would give, give a copy of a demo tape to another friend and another friend would give it to another. And, and it just started from there and rolled on. And I guess, you know, we, once we got one manager, uh, then we, you know, we could really, we had someone there who had a strong vision of where to take us, you know, instead of us knocking on the door and saying, hi, we want you to make a record, you know. And you, and you and the uh, you and the guys there, you really did have some amazing success in, in the charts there. I mean, did you, what what did you make of uh, Lovers All Around then? I mean, as the weeks went by, a total was it about fifteen weeks you spent at the top of the charts with that one? I, th- I think it was I think it was up there, you know. And, and I think that with, 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 with songs like that, you just kind of you know it became it became to to the point where you think, wow, I know another week or another week or you know another country, you're number one, and you know, it, it, it was a kind of bit of a global phenomenon that song and you know I'm very happy to have it in my repertoire and then when you look at it now in hindsight when you have the the luxury of uh, many decades passing by you look back and you go oh what a great time yeah you know but when but when you're eating chocolate every day (laughs) hmm 
Yeah. Hey, all and, better, good deal. And, you, and you've had a, a few interesting experiences on, on, on stage as well, not just with the band behind you there, but uh, quite a few musicals. Um, was it Chicago, yeah. Evita? Yeah, I've done a few. And this yeah, War of the few. Worlds, I mean, I love the movie, but I bet the, the musical version of that War of the Worlds was a cracking one to be part of. Oh, hi, Jeff. Jeff's a lovely man, you know, and it's a, you know, that was one of the records I remember discovering as a child again, you know, when it was Richard Burton who was doing the, the narration. On the live tour, it's uh, Liam Neeson, uh, who, uh, you know, another a stellar actor, you know, but it was nice to be able to go in there because you know, I was such a big fan of of, of Jeff's work, and it was great to hang out with the guys, you know, and uh, the artillery man was played by Ricky from the Kaiser Chiefs, he's a, he's a great he's a great front man and a great uh, great musician, you know, so it was good for me. Yeah, it was great. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Can, can we expect more acting from you? We're going to see you on TV or something in the future, or is that? No, you know? I never see, never. I mm-hmm. never seen, uh, never. You know, I'm always inspired when other people see things and uh, and me as an artist, and, and you know, so for me, it's about just exploring and and you know, and just seeing what basically what you can get away with. Yeah. You know, now I'm a little bit more kind of savvy when my enthusiasm <laughs> outweighs my talent. You know, <laughs> I kind of say, okay, no, that's not for me. Or, you know what? Uh, uh, maybe put that in the back boiler. Yeah. Right. And, but and I just continue to do what I do. So we're looking forward to the big concert. It's going to be on on Saturday then. Me too, and, man. Me um, too. So what? What are people that are getting their tickets right now? What are they going to expect from from this night? Then what's going to be ahead of them? Look, I'll, you know, uh, uh, I'll do whether we do what it says in the tin. We're going to bring a lot of hit records. We're going to bring a lot of music you'll be familiar with. We want to have a good time. You know, that's it. We get as much enjoyment out of it as what you give us. So it's a two-way streak. You want to come and have a good time? We'll be able to facilitate that. And you know what? That ain't rocket science what we do, as I said. We enjoy you sing. We enjoy you have a good time. Yeah. But, well, hey, can, where'd you go to get a ticket? And, <laughs> and, and talking about having a good time, have, have you got a, a, a few hours where you can spend in, in Scarborough? Because, you know, we'd like to, to see you enjoying yourself and, you know, taking a few hours of uh, enjoying... What, you mean like a seaside town? And, and, yeah, you know, yeah. A good, a good seaside town? Well, it would be rude not to. Yeah. It would be rude not to. A few chips and uh, and the like, maybe a nice uh, paddle down down the beach there b- before the show. That would be nice. Well, I'll ask you that question. Who does the best ice cream? <laughs> oh, there's a See, question. that's debatable. That's a question, you know. I'm always fascinated by, uh, you know, when you go to a seaside town, yeah. they'll say, that's the best fish and chips, or this is the best ice cream. And it's all, you know, food like ice cream and fish and chips are so much involved and woven into the tapestry of great seaside memories. Yeah, definitely. That's, a big, that's an important factor. Marty, you have a, a brilliant concert when you come to when you come to Scarborough. Let's sure hope that it is yeah. sun, 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 and not wet, wet, wet. And uh, yeah, have a, Aye, have a top the time. Show will go on. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Thanks for talking to us. All right, man. You're a star. Cheers.